All right, so section 8.7, the sum of an infinite geometric series, okay? Infinite, that means they're asking us, can you add, what would it add up to if you added forever? Not just five terms, not just 10 terms, but forever. How would that look, okay? Um, so, so yeah, so before, um, we had this equation. So let me show that to you really quick. Where is that? All right, we have this equation right here. And it was kind of complicated, right? Uh, it looked a little weird. It had a lot like a division portion with powers and stuff like that. That was the sum of a geometric series, just normal geometric series from point A to point B, like the first five terms or the first term to the 12th term or something like that, okay? So today, bless you, um, we are going to sum up uh, an infinite number of terms, okay? And the formula, thankfully, actually gets easier. It's uh, a sub one over one minus r, where zero has to be less than, the absolute value of r has to be less than one. In other words, the, the absolute value of r just has to be less than one. Now the r value is still considered our common ratio. Sometimes they'll give it to you. Sometimes you gotta figure it out by dividing, right? So the common ratio still are a sub one is still considered the first term. Okay, notice how with this one, the big S doesn't have a little letter. There's no like sub N. There's nothing there. If you ever notice that big S, that means that they want you to sum whatever it is for an infinite number of terms. Okay, you're going to be adding these things up forever. Okay, but it's a very simple process. Uh, like I said, in most cases, you just got to know what is your first term, what is your R value, and then uh, I would say really important, guys, this thing, you got to check this, because if this doesn't hold true, then you don't have to worry about uh, finding the sum. Now, again, that just means is the absolute value of R less than 1 and bigger than 0. If it is, then you can do this equation. If it's not, then you write no sum, okay? So I'm going to put that right here. Real quick note, if the absolute value of R is greater than or equal to one, there is no sum. All right, so if it's greater than or equal to one, there is no sum. So we're gonna be checking every time we do a problem, we're gonna check R, okay? Just to make sure. So let me show you uh, the uh, first examples. Now we have, uh, I think, a total of five or six examples, but, but like A, B, C, D, and then A and B. Um, they, they don't take very long, okay? They really don't. So don't, don't get discouraged at, at the fact that we might see six things here. Um, so we're just gonna find the sum of the infinite geometric series. Now, by the way, you know that it's infinite because what's gonna happen is you're gonna notice like this part right here, the three dots, and they don't give you an N as to like stop here, you know, N equals 10 or N equals eight, none of that stuff. You're just gonna see dot, 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 meaning continue, right, and so on. So that's how you kind of know that it's an infinite uh, series. Now, they told us infinite geometric, now I know that my a sub one is four. That's my first term. But now I gotta figure out my r value, okay? So let's see. If I divide negative two, remember I'm gonna, I'm gonna subtract, uh, not subtract, divide this way. If I divide negative two by four, I get negative half and then if I divide 1 by negative 2 I get negative half and if I divide negative half by 1 
I get negative half. So that means that my R value is negative half. Okay? My R value is negative half. Now, the question is, can I use the formula above, right? Am I able to use this formula? Well, in order to use it, I need the R value to have an absolute value less than 1 and greater than 0. So, here we go. The absolute value of R, which is the absolute value of negative half. That's equal to half, right? Right? It's just the absolute value of R, which is the absolute value of negative half. That's half. And notice half is between actually hold on half fits in there okay between 0 and 1 half is in there that means good my r value works okay so I just gotta check it I gotta check it Make sure that your R value is less than 1 and greater than 0 if you take its absolute value, which it is. So now that I checked it, I'm just going to plug it in. A sub 1 is 4 over 1 minus negative half. Okay? And uh, if, we, if we do calculate that, um, we get, you're going to put this on your calculator, 8 over 3. Okay, so notice the things we had to do. First off, we had to identify our A sub 1, which wasn't hard to do. We had to find an R value. Now, that wasn't like super super easy but that was this part right here okay that's how we found our r value okay now once we found our r value we checked the r value that was this part right here this was the check okay is the r value following the correct requirements is the absolute value of r between zero and one which it was because it was a half if that works, then I can plug it into the problem, which was over here. Okay, a sub 1 over 1 minus r. I plugged in my a sub 1, I plugged in my r value, I put it into a calculator, and that's the answer it gave me. Okay, so this is just the first example. We'll, we'll kind of move on a little bit, a little bit faster here. Um, but that was just kind of like the first example as to how it's supposed to look when you do the work. I'm just bringing out my calculator here because I know I'm going to need it. So let's look at the next problem. Okay. So part B says negative 5.6 minus 4.48 minus 3.584 minus 2.86. 7.2. So go ahead and write that down. All right, so in order to do these problems, I need to know my first term and I need to know my R value. So first term is negative 5.6. That's a sub 1. My r value, well, let's check that out. I'm going to do some scratch work on the side, okay? So I'm going to divide. i got to divide this with that, this with that, this with that. Again, calculator is going to be uh, very handy here. So negative 4.48 divided by negative... Uh, 5.6 is equal to 0 
Now I gotta check the other ones just to make sure because if, if they don't come out the same, that means this is not a geometric series, so I don't even have to worry about this problem. But it, it'll work, don't worry. But you're gonna wanna check them though. 3.584 divided by negative 4.48. This comes out to 0 0.8 as well. And then if we do the last one, negative 2.8672 divided by negative 3.584, that's 0 0.8 as well. So again, my R value, 0 0.8. So I'm gonna write that down, 0 0.8. Now, is it true that 0 0.8, the absolute value of it, which is 0 0.8, is within 0 and 1? Yes. Yeah, it is. Now, I'll just kind of state that the absolute value of R, which is the absolute value of 0 0.8, is 0 0.8, and 0 is less than 0 0.8, which is less than 1. Check, right? That works. So good. That means I can use my formula, okay? If it was like, if my R value was five, that's not between zero and one, so I'm gonna say, nope, no sum, can't do it, okay? But that is between zero and one. So, okay, let's put it into our formula then. S is equal to A sub one over one minus R. Now, A sub one is negative 5.6. R is 0 0.8, so 1 minus 0 0.8. And again, you're just going to plug this into your calculator. Okay, so negative 5.6 divided by 1 minus 0 0.8. Uh, and you should get a negative 28. Okay. So again, the formula is easy to use. It's just getting to use it that takes a little while. You gotta double check your R value. That's the main part. Okay, any questions on part B? All right, so let's check out part C. Now notice for part C, they didn't give us a list. They actually just gave us the information. Right? And that's not a problem. It's actually easier. Because all you have to do, since we know what R is, is ask yourself, is it true that the absolute value of R, which is the absolute value of half, which is half, is it true that half is within zero to one? Is that true? That half is between zero to one? I mean, that should be true, right? Half is 0.5. So this checks out. So since that checks out, then all I have to do is use my formula. So here we go. S is equal to A sub 1 over 1 minus R. A sub 1, they gave it to me. They said that's 32. 1 minus R, that's a half. So if you punch that into your calculator, you should get 64. And that's what it adds up to. By the way, you'll notice the first two problems we did, those I think are the hardest ones. Um, they will go to stuff like this, which becomes a lot easier to do because they already give you everything. So check out part D and part D is really quick. What's the problem with part D? I know a sub one equals six, r equals two. Yeah, the absolute value of r, which is two, is greater than one, right? Uh, the absolute value, whoops. The absolute value of r, which is the absolute value of two, which is two. 
This is not true. So all you're going to do is put no sum. That's it. Okay. Remember the the key to using the formula is that the absolute value of R has to be less than one but bigger than zero. Okay. So it has to be within zero to one, and this one is not. So no sum, no big deal. Moving on. All right, we got two of these, and then we're done. Now we're not we're not doing anything different. It's still the same process. Okay? It's still the same process. How do I know this is an infinite series? If you look right here, right? You see that infinity symbol on top? That means you're going forever. You're starting at your first term and you're going forever. Okay? And the way the the program writes your stuff, I'm just doing it the way they do it. Notice they have negative 9.5, then a dot for times, then 0.2, and then to the m minus 1. They don't put a parenthesis around it. I wish they would, uh, but they don't. That's okay. So let me kind of zoom back out really quick. So let's see if you guys uh, remember this from before. What is my a sub 1? Sorry? Not one. Now, one would be where we're, that would be my first term. Remember that the, the one and infinity part, that tells you your term. So if you start with m equals one, that means start with your first term. If it said m equals three, that means start with your third term, right? Um, my first term is actually right there. Remember the formula for an arith uh, not arithmetic, a geometric series looked like this. Right? So my first term is that number negative 9.5. So negative 9.5. What's my R value? Well, R is right here. That would be my point 0.2. So tell me, can I do the sum for this. Yes. Why? Yeah, I can do the sum because the absolute value of R, which is 0.2, is less than 1 and it's bigger than 0, right? So I'll just kind of write that down for us here. The absolute value of R, which is the absolute value of 0.2, which is 0.2, is within the range that they want, right? They want it to be within a certain range it works. So then let me put in my formula. S equals A sub 1 over 1 minus R. So S equals negative 9.5 over 1 minus 0.2. And uh, that equals to negative 11.875. This is why it's important that you can identify the R value and that you check it. Because when you check it, you should be able to tell, yes, I should do this problem, or no, I should not do this problem. And you'll kind of uh, like part B here. I'll leave the answer there. Should I do problem B? Why not? Yeah, 2.1, that's R, right? So notice, for problem B, A sub 1 is negative 2.2. Okay, R is 2.1. But the absolute value of R, which is the absolute value of 2.1, which is 2.1, that does not fit in here. Okay, that does not work. So then you're just going to write 
no sum. So this is what your homework today is on.